All the members suffer. I heard about this guy, I was reading the news, and uh, I, was, I heard about this guy that they found him dead in his apartment. Okay, he was dead in his apartment. Here's the shocking part about this. He was dead for over two years. He was dead for over two years. And nobody missed him for two years. And somebody finally opened the door and there he was. Guys, that's, a, that's just wrong. Stuff like that should not happen. The scripture says that God created the church to be a family, a loving family. And when one member suffers, all of the members suffer. That's one of the reasons we pray for people and we just grab them around them in our service and we lay hands on them to let them know we're here for you. Notice this. The church is God's answer to depression. The church is God's answer to depression. Uh, I was really depressed after that funeral, but my church, my small group encouraged me and I appreciated that. Romans 12, 15 tells us this. When others are happy, be happy with them. If they are sad, share their sorrow. There's a time to party in the church, and there's a time to pray in the church. There's a time to rejoice in the church, and there's a time to take a, take a moment to stop and to just love on each other and to just pray for each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says this. Encourage one another and build each other up. That is your job every Sunday, to encourage one another and build each other up. And it shouldn't just be on Sunday. It should be every day you get the opportunity to do that to somebody. The fifth reason we need to belong to church family is this, because you and I need a family to witness with us, to witness with us. If you're a follower of Christ, God has given you the responsibility of sharing the good news. What's the good news? God loves you. He forgives all of your sins. He died for them on the cross. He rose again from the dead so that you and I can go to heaven. Not only that, He gives you a purpose and a plan for your life. I don't know of any other better news than that. God loves you. Your sins can be forgiven. You can have a purpose for this life. And you can have heaven. And it's free. You don't have to do anything for that sort of gift. That is good news. And that is the message that the church has to bring. And so the scripture says you and I need each other to share our faith. Now I want you to notice this verse in John uh, 13, 35. I love this verse. It says this. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have what for one another, guys? Love, love for one another. Now, let me just be totally honest with you. When you get enough strength, now, now look up here for a second, follow me for a second. When you get enough strength or enough courage to invite your friend to church, don't you want to know that they're going to be welcomed here by everybody? Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. That people want them there? Mm -hmm. That they're welcomed here, that they're accepted here. That doesn't mean you have to tolerate everything in a person's lifestyle, but you can love them like Jesus did. You know, I, I tell this story in our new, in their covers class a lot, and there are people who are here before me, and so I just want you to give me some grace as I share this story. Uh, this was not the most friendly church when I got here. It just wasn't. And, and I I just want to share this. I would invite my friends to come to church and nobody said a word to them. And they would walk out and they'd tell me, how come nobody said hi to me? You know, it's not like there were a lot of people here. And uh, I said, I don't know. That's something we got to change. Guys, you, have, you guys do an excellent job of this now. But it had to be done over time and we had to work at it. Guys, when you bring somebody to church, you want them to be loved, you want them to be welcomed, you want them to be accepted, and you want the pastor to do a decent job, right? Uh, my wife told me last week about her roommates who were coming to church. 
My friends are coming to church, don't stink. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement, love. <laughs> when we come to church, we're to be a loving family. And I just want to encourage you to welcome everybody. Love on everybody. If we really love each other the way God wants us to love each other, we would have to lock the doors to keep people out. Because people are longing for that. They want that. Here's the problem that we have sometimes, and I shared this last week. The longer you're a Christian, the, the, the more uh, you don't hang around people who don't go to church or don't follow Christ. And so make those relationships. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For the Holy Spirit, God's gift, doesn't want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. If you want to bring them to church, you don't want to be embarrassed when your friends come. So don't embarrass anybody else's friends when they come. I want you to notice this uh, on your outline. The church is God's answer to community. Write that down. The church is God's answer to community. You want to leave your mark, you have to be in relationships. And the church is God's answer to that. You want to leave a mark on somebody's life? Get to know somebody. Stop isolating yourself. Stop saying one of these days because one of these days is never going to happen. You got to just do it. You got to just go for it. Um, I love this verse in 2 Corinthians 5. It says, through Christ, God has made peace between us and himself. Did you know that? We have peace with God through what Jesus did on the cross. Look at what it says. He gave us the work of telling everyone about the peace we can have with him. Notice this. So we have been sent to speak for Christ. Notice the words us and the words we. We have been given the work of telling everyone about this peace. And we have been sent to speak for Christ. You and I as the church have been sent to speak for Christ. The local church is not only the family, the lo a family, the local church, you might even write this down, the local church is the hope of the world. And let me prove it to you. And I just want to ask you a question, and I just want you to be totally honest with me, because I don't think you can find it anywhere else but here. There's no other place in the entire world where you're going to find these things. Now, just think with me. See if I'm telling the truth. There's no other place in the entire world but the church that you're going to find these things. People who will help you walk in faith. And I'm talking about all of these things I'm about to share with you. Wherever, where, where else are you going to find people to work with you to accomplish God's plan for your life? Those are two things. Where else are you going to find others who will watch your back, be honest with you, and help you grow? Now, you might find one or two of these or even three of these somewhere else, but you're not going to find all of them. Notice this. Where else can you find people who will weep with us when we are hurting? And where will you find people who will love you as God requires? There is not one place in the entire world but the church. That is why it's so huge that God created us, he created a family, and he created the local church as a part of that. And you will not find those five things together anywhere else in the world. You're not going to find them at a bar. You're not going to find them with a relationship. You're not going to find them with your career. You're not going to find them anywhere else but the church. I hope you got that. Uh, so let me ask you the question, and here it is. When are you going to belong to a church? When are you going to belong to a church? Uh, last week we had our newcomers class. We had 12 people show up. That was pretty cool. 12 people who are interested in saying, I want to make this church my church family. When are you going to do that if you haven't done that already? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the church. I thank you that next to salvation, the greatest gift you've given us is your family.
And so, Lord, thank you that we don't have to go through life alone. Thank you that you created Lincoln Avenue for a place for us. Now, God, I just ask you to help me step across the line and stop putting it off and stop waiting for better circumstances and to stop dating the church but to make a commitment.